fur trapping in Idaho began somewhere around 1824 and has been around since the mountain man era of John Coulter, Jim Bridger, and Joe Meek. Trappers provided pelts for clothing, taxidermy mounts, decoration, and trade or sale. Fur trapping is still an important and legal part of our state's culture and is regulated by Idaho Fish and Game. Hi, I'm Jennifer Struthers, a wildlife biologist with Idaho Fish and Game. A big part of my job is using traps to capture and radio collar wolves. Trapping seasons are open in Idaho for a variety of species at many different times of the year. This information can be viewed on the Idaho Fish and Game website. Dog owners should be aware that traps may be present on the landscape. Dogs will be attracted to foothold traps due to the scent and bait and they may also encounter snares and body grip traps. Most traps and snares are simple in design and easy to operate, if you know what to do. Some of the larger foothold and body gripping traps can be challenging because they require more effort to open, but the principles are the same. You should always carry a six foot leash or length of rope with you. It is also a good idea to carry a pair of short-nosed cable cutters. These are essential tools that may end up saving your dog. The first thing to remember is that a dog in a trap may be frightened, but not necessarily hurt. A person can put their hand in most foothold traps without being hurt. However, the longer the dog is in the trap, the more likely it is to struggle and be injured. First, cover your dog's face with a coat or shirt it may be best to put the dog's face in the sleeve. This will help prevent your dog from biting you while you attempt to remove it. Dog owners have sustained bites removing dogs from traps, even though the animals themselves were unharmed. This is a single long spring trap. It is designed to hold an animal by its foot in the jaws. You must compress the single spring to release the jaws. This can be done braced against a hard surface with your hands or your feet. Most other traps are variations on this same design. This is a double long spring trap. You need to compress both springs to release the jaws. This is a coil spring trap. You must compress the levers on both sides to release the jaws. All these trap styles are available in a range of sizes. The larger traps will be more difficult to open, but the same principles apply. The larger coil spring traps can be compressed with your hands or feet. The larger double long spring traps can be compressed with your feet while pulling your weight towards the jaws. This is a conibear, or body gripping trap. It is designed to quickly kill the animal by compressing its rib cage. They also come in a wide range of sizes. Your dog is most likely to be trapped by its head or neck, so it's critical you understand how to act quickly to save your dog. These are the jaws. These are the springs. Here are the locks. Your dog is likely to have its windpipe blocked, so it will be unable to bark and may become unconscious quickly. If you have a strong grip, you may be able to squeeze both springs and rotate the trap 90 degrees to take the pressure off the dog's windpipe. Be careful not to further injure the dog by twisting its head and neck, especially if it is a smaller dog. Next, compress one of the springs using both hands until you can fasten the lock. Repeat on the other spring, then slide the dog's head from between the trap jaws. If you cannot compress the springs with your hands, you can use a rope or a leash. Feed the loop of your leash through the loops of the spring twice. 
Maintain the trap in the horizontal position to prevent further injury to your dog's neck. Put your foot through the loop of your leash or stand on the end. Pull the leash until the spring is fully compressed and you can place the lock over the spring. Repeat on the other side. Remove the trap by sliding over the head. Smaller diameter ropes or leashes will pass more easily through the loops, especially of smaller model traps. Your dog may also encounter snares while in the field. Snares are designed to loop around the neck and choke down on the animal. Leash trained dogs may not struggle as much as a wild animal but the snare will still tighten on the dog's neck. Keep your dog from struggling as much as possible so the snare does not tighten down further. Look for the lock mechanism on the snare. Pinch together the cables in front of the lock mechanism to release the tension and then slide the lock mechanism back. Here that is again. The lock mechanism cannot slide backwards unless the tension is released. To release the tension, pinch together the cables in front of the lock mechanism and then slide the lock mechanism back. If you cannot slide the lock mechanism, you will have to cut the snare. Do this by placing your fingers under the snare next to the dog's neck and use your cable cutters to cut the snare between your fingers. If you cannot get your fingers under the snare, you may still be able to cut the cable with your short-nosed cable cutters. Standard wire cutters, often called dykes, or wire cutters on a Leatherman-type multi-tool are unlikely to be effective. Remember to inspect your dog after the incident for injuries and seek veterinary assistance if necessary. For more information, visit Idaho Fish and Games website.